Oh my god, I'm like such a big fan. But more importantly, did you watch Game of Thrones? Does Jon Snow's corpse make me want to become a necrophiliac? I think we need to start a club, honey. Ah! Oh! So at the beginning of the episode, we have Miss Cleo, who's now Miss Cleo, honey, because she's grown ass woman. She's not taking no ish from no one. Okay, but back at the wall, there is a full on Branch Davidian standoff going on. They are blasting Peter Gabriel sledgehammer. I wanna be <laughs> Meanwhile, their downstairs neighbor, Humus Nuffleupagus, is pissed because he gotta be at work early. And then we had King's Landing Dice Clay. He was doing his set, being a real Josie Grossy. From what I hear, Jamie Lannister's half an inch shy of an inch. When he got the heckle, the small heckle, by Beefy C3PO. Beef 3PO. How rude! So then we had Barefoot Contessa. He was giving us full Bernie Sanders. Every one of us is poor, and yet together. We can overthrow an empire. But then Brother D's like, I'm with her. And then all those Bernie bros were like, we don't like that story, sit down. And then we had Munch. He knows the potential of the dragons and honey. He's letting them go. Well, Elsa. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. Next time I have an idea like that, punch me in the face. So then evil Elijah Wood, he's not too excited to be a big brother, so he goes full Menendez on his dad and fuller Menendez on his brother. I have not been that worried for a baby since Precious Head Mongo. And evil Elijah Wood's daddy-o was not the only daddy getting got. My bae Theon's dad is in trouble too, girl. Because the Iron Island's Ted Nugent is on the rope course when he fails that trust fall. Ah! Woo -hoo 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 then, at the end, Jon Snow is giving me full-on Jesus post-crucifixion realness, but like, fuckable. Honestly, that gave me like the guiltiest boner I have ever had, other than that gay rape scene at the end of Outlander. Wait, I don't watch Outlander. So this like wife time travels to 1700, and the great-great-great-great-grandfather of her 1940s husband rapes her 1700s husband in the butt, in the face. That's a show? Yeah. You know what the most surprising part of the scene was? Is that I didn't know evil Stevie Nicks went to the Aveda Institute. And like a matte brown lip, Jon Snow is back! <gasps> yes, queen! Yes! Yes! Who's your girl? Who's your girl? Honey, you're giving me so much Sansa for realness right now. You're a greedy bitch, you know that? Where are... My dragons. Trixie Mattel and in front of my face. I cannot even. Did you watch Game of Thrones this week? Girl, is America's Next Drag Superstar Bob the Drag Queen? <gasps> At the beginning, we had Jon Snow. He's going to Tulum for the winter. Where are you gonna go? South. Before he could get his Tommy Bahamas together, what's behind door number one? Tilda and Sansa Fierce coming in hot for a family reunion. Girl, they were giving full home for college for Christmas. Do you remember those kidney pies old nan used to make? With the peas and onions. I mean, it was just great. I was like a corpse all semester. It was just like a normal year at college. Just like being like repeatedly raped by a psychopath. And then we've got Earl Grey who has arrived, honey, and he is running for stepfather of the year. <gasps> Falcon. Greatest and rarest of birds. Back at Marin County, Munch Munch is three apple teenies deep. He's trying to give his Emancipation Proclamation to free the slaves. Slavery is the way of our world. You don't need slaves to make money. Ugh, and poor Marjorie on a little field trip to go visit her brother, who's at the Pray the Gay Away conversion camp. I just want to stop. It's like, oh, I'm juror, like that potato sack. It is so sad to see a queen in bone beige. And then we've got the shovel guy from Home Alone. He's having a heart to heart with Tom Tom, but they're walked in upon by vintage Mia Farrow who sends him a packet. Leave. Girl, he sashays away like he stole all the silverware, honey. And then we've got busted homeless Nellie Bertado who makes the fatal mistake of being a woman in the scene with evil Elijah Wood. It's like, girl, who eats the skin of an apple? But there was this movie with Anne Heche and she's doing that with an apple, so I actually really like to eat the skin from an apple. Whenever the guy's peeling teeth off an apple, I make a point not to sit in his lap. Cause then you get the meat thermometer in the jugular like she did. You do not want to talk about Anne Heche, and that's okay. And then back at the wall, that steam steam chemistry between Tilda and Wildlings Louis C.K. was palpable, honey. 
Oh, that, that's the part where stringy Jesse Pinkman says the tagline for Dave and Buster's. Sorry about the food, not what we're known for. And then their polite dinner conversation comes to a screeching halt when they have to go on Jimmy Kimmel to read mean tweets about themselves. To the traitor and Buster Jon Snow, you have betrayed your own kind, you have betrayed the North. You will watch as I skin them living. You will watch as my soldiers take turns raping your sister. And then at the climax, we've got Christina Aguilera. She's testifying before the Committee on Reproductive Rights. But honey, she's leaning right into that fire. It reminds me of the time I was at a Hamburger Mary's and I was doing Shaka Khan's Through the Fire and there was an actual kitchen fire that night. It's so lemonade. Totally, and they were all Jay-Z and they were all like, sorry girl. Penny, this is giving me an unbelievable Daenerys Targaryen realness. Silence, bring back my curls. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my dragons? Oh my God, Jenny, did you watch Game of Thrones this week? Um, am I single and loving it? Yes. <laughs> But first we had Sansa Fierce. She was madder than a wet hen when she gets an urgent text message from Earl Grey to go down to the anthropology barn so she can give him the full Mariska Hargitay interrogation treatment. What do you think he did to me? And baby k goes down to see Adam Sandler's remake of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Terrific. I hated that baby dick on that Game of Thrones. Uh, it's a wart. If we're gonna see a dick, show me an adult man dick. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully we wouldn't see a yeah, we wouldn't bit do that. into yeah. Although. <laughs> Although I wouldn't put it, yeah. Yeah. And next we find out that Klingon Tila Tequila is the employee of the month for Greenpeace who kickstarts the White Walkers to save the environment. We were at war. Our sacred trees cut down. We needed to defend ourselves. Meanwhile, back in Seattle, Lena Dunham is vying to become the first female cheer captain of her squad in the fiercest All Saints duster ever. We are a sea people. Our god is a sea god. I'm your own great joy. I claim the salt throne. Wrong. Only to be interrupted by drunk Uncle Wolverine crashing Thanksgiving dinner. Little Theon. Heard you have no cock. <laughs> Rude. OMG. Back at Coachella, we've got Christina Aguilera and Sir Carlisle having this full tearjerker of a Notting Hill moment. And he's like, I'm just a boy with terminal westrosoriasis standing in front of a girl asking her to love me. And then we've got cute Shag Brand who wargs into the wrong side of town with the insane cold posse. But then, before Sansa Fierce could bid Good Day LA to John, she let him know that she was poised to win this season of Project Runway. I made it myself. I like the wolf bit. And then it's Fuck Watch 2016, episode two. We've got wilding Louis C.K. who definitely wants to punch Tilda's cookie. I'm horny for both of them, apparently. You've got like a full cloner talking about it. I have a total boner right now. No, cloner. A cloner. Yes. What's that? Clip owner. Oh. I've never seen a vagina. <laughs> you like, have it? Like only in pictures. Oh my god, girl! <laughs> no. And that last scene with the White Walkers was so lazy because it was a complete ripoff of Toto's Africa. Girl, what? Okay, look. I stopped an old man along the way, and the wild dogs cry out in the night. It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. If you want this haircut, you're gonna have to settle down. And then at the end, it was giving me so much interstellar when we find out poor baby Hodor, it's not his name, girl, it's his destiny. Oh, the door! 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 I mean, it's just too bad that his name wasn't gets away from zombies without any problem. <laughs> Why couldn't that have been his name? This is giving me unabashed Mira Reed realness. <laughs> I love it. Where are my dragons? <laughs> Z. <laughs>
week. Did you see Game of Thrones this week? Uh, are White Walkers dry as hell? My golly Moses. At the beginning, we had Sporty Spice. It was her first day back at CrossFit, but she was struck to funk pulling Miss Cleo through the snow. I know, I wasn't sure if Miss Cleo was warging or watching Fear and Loathing. We were somewhere around Barstow when the drugs began to take hold. There is no way of explaining the terror I felt. <laughs> And then this ferocious ass burner sweeps in to save the day with his fierce fire swinging skills. Meanwhile, Tubby Lubby took Leah Remini to meet his rich ass carb shaman daddy, who was like, yo, you fell off that paleo diet. Would you care for more bread? Yes, please. Not fat enough already. But apparently, being an asshole skips a generation because Tubby Lubby has to storm back into that food door and he says, girl, I cannot quit you. On his way out, he went all five finger discount on that sword. He was like putting the steel back in Valerian steel. But then baby Casey, she's about to go full Nomi Malone on Bravosi Crystal Connors, but then at the 11th hour, she has a change of heart and she decides not to push her down the poison stairs. Careful of that one. She wants you dead. She drops out of assassin school and she only had like one semester left. It's a beautiful day here in King's Landing and welcome to our second annual Walk of Shame Parade. Brought to you by Macy's. You'll see it all today, folks. Short hair, boobs, spitting, screaming, and yelling, bloody feet, and a bell. Shame. Plus a visit from Santa Claus. But there is a big old French twist on that, Chignon. Together. We announce a holy alliance between the crown and the faith. Just like my main man, Tommy Jefferson, would have wanted churches and states working together. How did you get tickets to Hamilton? Meanwhile, back at Claim Jumper, we had Road Hard put away soaking wet Lord Frey, who apparently had someone's like uncle tied up for two years. I literally don't know. Who is that? I don't know, who is that? I don't know, who is that? You're like the first straight guy in my chair of like in years, you should know who this is. It's like Game of Thrones, it's like your thing. And hunty, those flowers are still in the attic because we've got vintage Mia Farrow and Brother D having a Gorgina incest makeout for Roche Sesh. Only two people in the world. I hope that she is on the King's Landing new ring because she cannot have another kid right now. They need to keep it to handsies and blowsies. And if he's woke, go down to Stay woke. So then, Uncle Bear Grylls is making rabbit blood smoothies when he reveals that he's a biracial White Walker. His children found me to stop the walker's magic from taking hold. For me, what I was living for the most with him is that he's really like straddling these two worlds. It's just like a white girl who goes to the Caribbean and comes back with cornrows. So when the last scene, Coachella is over, there's a ton of traffic on the 10 West, but not for my girl, Christina, cause she's taking the DOV lane. And not only is she the DOV lane, honey, she's giving us a full Oprah, her favorite things episode. You're a blood rider! You're a blood rider! You're a blood rider! <laughs> and look under those horses, ladies, because you're all getting sick of! Boy, you are giving me some edges so fresh, sparrow realness. <laughs> Where are my dragon. Oh my God, Betsy, did you see Game of Thrones this week? Um, is my favorite dance the Bartman? <laughs> So off the top, we were at this Gorgina yoga retreat and they are doing the most girls. They are building their gorgeous studio. They even have their cafe gratitude buffet line going with grateful community bowls. And I was so confused because there was no theme music and then Dog the Bounty Hunter is back. And she was like, live from Westeros, it's Saturday night. With your musical guest, Imagine Dragon, and your host, Ian McShane. And then Barefoot Contessa finds out that Kate Middleton is a sparrow in the streets and a sparrow in the sheets. And he's like, honey, you gotta get that P game on 10. Yeah, and she's like, hey dude, I'm not horny. Congress does not require desire on the woman's part. But the good news is Kate Middleton hasn't been drinking the 700 Club Kool-Aid. But you should leave, grandmother. That rose note was clutch! Oh! Yeah! 
Diva. King's Landing Library is open. And we had High Garden Maggie Smith reading Vintage Mia Farrow to Bill Penty. I wonder if you're the worst person I've ever met. You've lost Cersei. It's the only joy I could find in all this misery. She went there? Ooh. But then Road Hard put away Soaking Wet Lord Frey's team was playing chicken with hair system Sean Connery, who was like, who even is that guy? I don't know. Probably just some old dude they found. And then on Bear Island Shark Tank, tiny Lori Grenier is like, I'm not investing in this. So why should I sacrifice one more moment life for someone else's war? But then hooked on Bonnick's counters and Lori totally promises to get them on QVC. How many fighting men can we expect? 62. That's like when you win the showcase showdown but you find out all you won was a dishwasher. Oh my God. And then Lena Dunham shows us that women can objectify women too. I'm gonna go fuck the tits off this one. Then she makes Theon play the best drinking game ever. The rules are when your sister screams at you for being depressed, you drink. If you're so broken, take a knife and cut your wrists. Drink. Oh, maybe that's not a great drinking game. Meanwhile, baby K Stu books her trip home with a Trivago guy and gets first class. You can have a hammock in steerage. I want a cabin. Yeah, only to get stabbed by the grandma from my big fat Greek wedding. Sweet girl. she finds herself in the most terrifying place imaginable, <laughs> the American healthcare system. And then Dog the Bounty Hunter gets the creepy crawlies when the ohms have come to an abrupt stop at the yoga retreat and he knows it is not time for Shavasana. I bet they all died from doing that Beaker boot camp stuff. You cannot just go straight into an Urdva Mukra Danyura Rasana without even just a little bit of a thought of what a vinyasa is. Get it together. I don't know what you're saying, but uh, Ian McShane did not do a good job hosting SNL. Yes, honey, girl with no name, realness. <laughs> I have a name, it's Betsy. Where are my dragons? Get over here, you little. Ooh. Ooh. Girl Scout, did you watch Game of Thrones this week? Am I with her? So at the beginning, we had Baby Kesu, who was very injured, so she did the right thing and went straight to a professional. Actress. Which makes sense. Like, when I broke my ankle, I went directly to Deborah Messing. But then after that, fake blonde share started to sound eerily like Paul Simon's plastic surgeon. She'll have a hard time finding work after what I did to her face. But then, Dog the Bounty Hunter took a page out of baby Beyonce's book and he was like, hold up, they don't love you like I love you. Back up, they don't love you like I love you. Step down, they don't love you like I love you. You're shit at dying, you know that. Then Beef 3PO must be on spring break because he has poppin' tops left and right. I choose violence. Brother D and Tilda are working together to make Westeros great again. And I'm like, is this the notebook? Because they are giving off Nicholas Sparks. And I was just right there with used car salesmen shipping them to hook up. You think they fuck it? I fuck her. You'd fuck her, wouldn't you? You're the one with the magic cook. And they are perfectly proportioned for a standing 69. And then Munchers waxes Carlo Rossi about his life dreams. I like to have my own vineyard, make my own wine. The imp's delight. They'd sell Lester Rosé. Pinot Grayscale. Stabernay. If you have a girl on a budget, you could always go for the Bravos box wine. But then next, Marin County is under siege by the soup plantation owners. But then all the good little baby slave boys and girls are about to have their Christmas wishes come true. Up on the rooftop of dragon clothes, and through the window comes Christina Aguilera. And then Dog the Bounty Hunter, he happens upon Phil Collins and his homegirls from Genesis, and they all decide to do a little hanging out together. <laughs> And just like my Aunt Joni had an estate sale, she had straight for the boots. Then back in St. Elsewhere, baby k Stu wakes up from her rec room for a dream, only to find out that blonde Ellen Page is channeling full T-1000. And baby k Stu is doing San Francisco right. She's hitting the farmer's market. She's cruising the bathhouse. She's even putting herself on a juice cleanse. 
And finally, she goes girl on girl. And at the end, Baby Case 2 finally gives the empowerment zinger we've been waiting two seasons for. A girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell, and I'm going home. A girl is Jonathan Van Ness of Brentwood, California, and I'm gonna make this hair look sickening. You're from Brentwood? That's fancy. Ow, girl, you're giving me some Kenbar Red Priestess realness. Where are my dragons? As a country and community, our hearts were broken by this senseless act of violence that was committed in Orlando this weekend. Hopefully we can come together as a group and help our brothers and sisters get through this senseless act of violence. So please support the Fund for the Survivors of the Pulse shootings, GoFundMe. You can find the link for that in our description.